reputation. And I think investing more and more in tools, in, in people, in talent, in services that can help us uh, further grow that space will be extremely uh, important. I think it will be no agency will be able to survive if they didn't do that. So I think those are the two big things that uh, you know we see, and of course investing in uh, more cerebral talent uh, who can think, lead, advisors, advisory roles, etc., which is what will help us get there. And and for content, uh, what kind of people are you hiring? Are you hiring uh, PR professionals? Are you hiring journalists? Uh, so for content, uh, it's very interesting because there's some PR professionals who get it and some P PR professionals who don't. And there's a lot of uh, storytellers, whether it's been erstwhile journalists, it's been uh, people who've been uh, also bloggers who are who are doing a Do lot of it themselves. It? Do journalists get it? Uh, some of them do. Again, like I Most said, of them don't. there are some of them who do. And of course, having an editor in-house, making sure you're running it like a whole newsroom, is becoming critical for us to deliver because most publications are running short on talent and bureaus and they're looking for us for it. Okay. So. We have one last question from Professor Chatterjee. Yep. Um, Valerie, um, this is particularly directed towards you because you have been talking about content. But if you see the bigger challenge that has come through in this discussion, it is about uh, how the world is changing. So digital and social and whatever else was one part. And Sanjim's point of PR covering more ground than marketing being true. The question really is, where is the place for strategy? Because that's one word, by the way, I did not hear in this discussion at all. And if PR has to move up the value chain and get those 10x, 25x, or 50x of the current realizations, they need to provide something which is strategic in nature rather than executional in nature. So my question actually goes to all the panelists that in case PR is to provide value like the way you have been saying, what is that strategic element that a Bain or a PwC or a Deloitte brings on table? Can I go first? What is strategy? You know, because at the end of the day, if you, um, you have Bain, you have, there are various people who bring uh, business object, you want us to, rise in being able to deliver uh, a business objective. So you'll have enough and more strategy that is available from the people who invest that much and more to be able to bring you business issues, challenges, etc., which are in the forefront, right? It's about being able to take that and deliver it through and see the company through. And the way and the role that we will play in being able to see the company through is to be able to create um, or show the way for companies to be able to tell their stories in a far more significant manner to align to that strategy or that outcome or those challenges that have been pushed forward to them. So that is where, for me, I believe that content will play that kind of a role. And our role will be to think that content through a little bit more strategically. So, so just to take that point of strategy back to content, how will you strategize content from creation to delivery across formats? And the question really comes up is why is the digital and the media agency is catching up on the content game, like Sanjay mentioned. Sanjay actually brought that point very clearly. Then, and we have an alumni-run company called Glitch, which is primarily in that area. Okay, And they are just riding the bandwagon. They don't even have enough people to meet requirement. Orders are just pouring in. And so therefore, talking about content from a um, you know, blog perspective is very different from what the advertiser or the brand is looking for. They are looking at interactive, by the minute, change on the fly, have a strategy for 20 pieces over a day so okay. that, you know, the engagement keeps happening. And this is what I see for great campaigns, by the way. So the question to you as a CEO is, as a PR agency, how do you latch on to the con content opportunity that you see so clearly from a strategic perspective? So for example, um, let me give you a sense of if you're able to bring in a lot more thought with your marketer. So there are two parts to content as well, right? There's a marketing side to it, which is an advertising content, and it's be able to you know, run that through server search or whatever else it may be. 
that you want to keep generating content to play on that piece. But there's a larger play on content, which talks about how do you position the company? How are you really creating internal uh, uh, stakeholders to be able to deliver the same uh, story idea? How do you motivate external sto stakeholders to say this? Day? So what we what we would do as a communications company is to maintain that string of messaging that goes right through different elements. So a lot of times you have a media buying company or an advertising agency who possibly will focus only on that element of that particular campaign, but forget about the overall messaging that the whole organization really stands for. And that's what we do as bringing in a strategic element to what they do. Great. Uh, thanks. Throw in, can I throw in a question yes. to Sanjay then? Yeah, OK. One. <laughs> <laughs> so Sanjay, ready? just to take that point further from what I asked Valerie, as the marketing head of HDFC Life, where would you put your money? The visible result or the long-term potential result? Well, uh, see, as a, com like, as a group or a company, we always believed in long-term. We are in long-term business anyway. So we'll actually anyway put our money on long-term part of it. But coming back to your question, see, again, uh, I, I don't see like, you know, when we are talking about PR or strategic PR, fundamentally it is wrong. You know, the fundamentals are pretty clear what we need to do. But how we are going to deliver it is the bigger question mark. While other guys are really learning it much faster on the job and trying to deliver it, here it remains more of a boardroom discussion rather than really coming back. So I, like, you know, this is my question to all PR and see how many of you today has like, you know, again, I'm not, I don't do marketing PR. I do the income PR for the entire company, uh, a, a regulator relationship, everything I do. How many of you today has got an uh, in-house expert when I give a business challenge or pick up a business challenge, drop an infographic and give it, send it to the all media houses on the same day on a business problem. See, for example, Today, I don't see any agency have got one in-house guy who can really do an infographic. We you all might, have it. <laughs> you might have it, but you know, it may probably, so that it's about the quality of the infograph, uh, which is going to come out and you know, which will really quality. deliver. <laughs> <laughs> all right, on all that right. note. Uh, I, I just want to, I just want yeah. to answer, uh, you know, Pavel Chatterjee's question. You, you know, I, I actually avoid the word strategy. I think it's, the word has been uh, misused, abused. So uh, I deliberately do not use the word strategy, uh, you know, in uh, in any one of my either my presentations or any one of my discussions. What I feel is that to to be, to have strategic insight, to be strategic is a given. To be good in execution is a given. So, you know, it's it's given that if you are a a good PR professional, a good marketing professional, you will have uh, you will have you will have a combination of strategy as well as execution. So I would say that, and whether it's a CEO as well, I mean, CEO 90% of the time he does his execution. It's, you know, strategy is only 10% or whatever we do. So I would say that, you know, it's a given. So I would not really put that as, as a separate element altogether. Great. Uh, thanks. And uh, I think we are running majorly out of time. So, Thanks Thank all for coming here for uh, a Sunday well spent, braving the boulders, etc. Uh, <coughs> over. Yeah. Uh, I would like to uh, call upon Professor Raj Patra to please felicitate our guests. Uh, we have custom doodles made by our own creative cell. And uh, please, guys, present them with bouquets. <laughs>
guests, please uh, proceed to the next room for lunch. Uh, students, please stay back. I hope you had a sumptuous lunch and uh, we are starting off with the second half and uh, with a combined expertise of 25 years in marketing, brand management and communications and reputation management spanning across industries, multiple industries, Mr. Paresh Chaudhary is currently Chief Executive Officer at Madison PR. He was also the Group President Corporate Communications at Reliance Industries Limited, Head Corporate Communications at Unilever and Director Corporate Communications at Randbaxi. His involvement in launching international brands and creating brand, brand identity manuals, media policies, and customized, cri customized crisis communication guidelines have proved a ready reference for each organization he has been associated with. For now, Mr. Paris Chaudhary would like to share his thoughts on the previous panel discussion. Sir, if you could please come over. Thank you so much, sir. So this is this is you know completely extempo. Uh, so Dipshika is looking at the agenda, and so is Nitin saying, "Hello, it's not your turn anymore." Uh, so the front seats are empty. Can you guys please come in the front? Sharon, just enjoy that. No, please, Karen, come in the front. Okay. So I I just want to make this uh, for about two two and a half minutes, not more than that. Uh, so I came a little late for the for the panel, and I met a lot of students outside who uh, must have got a little. Um, so the points made by the panelists in the previous, the first one was pretty, pretty solid, pretty honest, pretty frank. But I think some of you guys are got a little confused whether what is this PR agency guy is doing? You know, they're not delivering. Why are the clients not paying? Is, is there a proper brief coming in? Is this the garbage in, garbage out situation, etc. Right? So I just want to kind of you know tell you guys, don't worry, everything is fine. You know, everything is absolutely great in our industry. Uh, we love doing this because clients would always want the best and agencies want some more money. But I think the fact is, and somebody really commented, that you tell me how much you're paying us. If you're paying us peanuts, I will only give you a monkey, right? But if the client only sees a monkey, he's not going to pay you, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cycle. Um, somebody also mentioned to me yesterday that, you know, we need some fresh MBAs with creative thought. We need people who are out of the box thinkers. Let me tell you, even I've not think, thought of the box here, 30 years now, right? And I know a lot of guys in my, my industry and I've done a lot of corporate comm jobs in large organizations. Out of the box thinking comes when you're setting the loo in the morning sometimes. And not really, you know, when you're going down and working on strategy, brainstorming sessions and stuff like that, okay? So nobody is really born with creative thinking and you know, out of the box thinking, it comes with experience. So for people like you, and I love SIMC students uh, for two, three reasons, because you're led by this great guy called Chandan, and of course, great campus. And two, three of you all have worked with me uh, as interns. And I think uh, those two people are here. Where are you guys? Abhilasha? Ah, okay, great. Um, I just want to say two things, right? Unless the, the onus is on the industry to make sure that you guys are doing a great job and you love what you're doing. I think communications, PR, communication partners with any client that Madan does or Dipshikha does or Nitin does or I do with so many global clients and Indian clients, you can actually add value to people's lives every day you come to work, every single day. Unlike HR, unlike HR, okay, and HR comes with a lot of baggage, they hire and fire people, nobody likes the HR guy, right? Marketing, sales, R&D, manufacturing, etc. We are the only guys, whether we are an agency or we are in the corporate comm teams, we manage and change people's reputations, perceptions, right? Everybody who works for an organization goes back and says, oh, you know what, I'm very happy and proud to be working for this company. So that's our job. So for you to have that passion and that belief that when I join an agency or, or, or a company, my job is to change people's lives, internally and externally both. So our job is to make sure that I convert each one of you, and I think the onus lies with the whole industry, is to converting a PR, so-called a PR manager, which has actually got a very bad tag, quite unfortunately, uh, and it's improving, of course, over the years, into a brand manager. So we spoke about worldviews, we spoke about a whole lot of things. Unless you're not a brand manager, there is no way you can talk that language with a brand manager of, say, a PNG or a Cafe Coffee Day or, 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 with, or with Flipkart, right? 
So that's my onus. How do I train you? How do I give you that 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 the tools and the capabilities to really feel great about what you want to do? And once I give you those brands to start working on from grounds up, a part of your KRAs, a part of your performance appraisals, go to consumer homes. Why do only brand managers of companies go to consumer homes? You know, at Levers and at Runback C and GSK, I used to go to consumer homes, but at an agency, I don't see people going to consumer homes as a part of KRA for every 15 days. Channel management, what is an SKU? What is market share? What is MAT? What is ORG? What's the competition doing? How is modern trade uh, you know, doing? How is mom and pop uh, behaving in, in a Kalyan versus a Timbuktu? Now, this is something that the owners with us. So don't get worried about it. And what is online doing? And of course, digital space is something that is, I think everybody's going to work on. But so I just want to say two things. Please understand that while you have a very robust course and I've seen your syllabus, it's fantastic. It's really preparing you to go out there, right? But to expect you to be a great communication partner from day one that you join uh, a large organization or an agency, I think it's asking for too much. I wouldn't expect that. I would want you to come with just two things. A, a lot of passion to say I will change people's lives in brand building, right? And two, that I will, I will, I, I love this company for the brands that we have and how, how, how honest we are in our communications. So these are two things that is that you just come with, period. Because the two years, what you've done in this campus and what you're learning is good enough. Internship, you know, case studies, external faculty, etc. The onus lies with me. So it's not about monkeys and peanuts. It's about how many questions can you ask the client. I always tell my people across, this is my first job in the agency, it's been three years now. I tell my people at every single level, in, including interns, when I have an induction program for two hours, don't take shit from two guys. Client and media. Don't take shit from them, right? So if you are if you are giving your best, if you are you're researching well, if you are really writing well, if you are understanding the brand well, the environment well, that's the job. And we'll convert into execution, no problem at all. We spoke about strategy. Strategy is important, by the way. Right? Strategy is important. Now, how do you define strategy? We'll come to it later, maybe in some other sessions. But how do you understand strategy as simple as what is strategy? So don't worry about the strategic thing. Everybody talks about strategy. Come with a clean heart. Come with in integrity. And my last point is, I spent 25 years in corporate and three years in agency. I've enjoyed every single day I've worked with agency. Today, if I have to go back to a corporate communication job, I'm not too sure what I'm going to enjoy it, really. You know, the action, the working on multi-brands, the, 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 the fever of saying, oh, I'm doing an ole at 10 o'clock and I'm doing a pantine at 2 o'clock and I'm doing a cafe coffee day at 5 o'clock. You know, and it's, it's pretty awesome. Crisis, issues. What PR can do and what corporate com can do, advertising agencies, media, social, they can't do, by the way. Okay, let me tell you this. Social, of course, can do because it's a part, like Sanjum said, is a part, so much of a part of the whole PR strategy. But what we can do, a lot of integrated marketing mix agencies can't. So remember that. So you're in the right place, right time. New India is coming up in the next two, three, five years. And get prepared. And let this do some kick act worse, okay? Thanks. Thank you so much, sir, for your insights. Uh, on the same line, uh, we have the next panel discussion where uh, has the time come for the clients to communicate with the addressable community exclusively over social media or is an IMC-led amalgamated approach more effective? It's time for our next panel discussion, which is social media, the bell of the PR ball. Our, our first speaker, Mr. Harish Tibalwala, is a business owner and joint CEO at socialwaveland.com. Mr. Harish has also co-founded homeindia.com, known for its exclusive merchandise and reliable service. He has successfully created, from grassroots level, businesses in the area of consulting, e-commerce, as well as retail sales and distribution. He also has expertise in online reputation management, branding, and retailing. The next panelist is Ms. Deepshika Dharmaraj. Deepshika Dharmaraj began her career in public relations with Genesis Burson Masteller, known as GBM, in 1994 after obtaining a master's in business economics from Delhi University. And now, as chief marketing and growth officer of Genesis, 
Her role encompasses growth of clients, talent and building partnerships to further enhance the services and strong backbone of processes and systems. She specializes in integrated marketing, strategic communications, reputation management and internal communications. The next panelist is a communications manager at Twitter, Ms. Bhairavi Jhaveri. She has been a featured lifestyle journalist for about nine years in the leading newspapers and tabloids. And also she is right now a freelance journalist for HD Branch and Vogue and many others. When she isn't hashtag in on it, she is also working on content plans for various brands and startups. She is giving, she is now giving a spin for communications and creative spin for Twitter in India. Our moderator for the event, for the panel, is Mr. Pradyuman Maheshwari, who is the adjunct faculty for SIMC. Uh, I would request everyone to please come up to the stage. Hi and uh, good afternoon. After Parish's uh, encouraging words on uh, uh, on the PR agency not being, you know, and not <coughs> possibly we were a little harsh on uh, on the entire agency business, or it kind of came across as that. Though of course we we obviously don't mean all of that was was that that that. You know, things are really bad that you can't seek employment there. That was obviously wasn't the uh, the intent. Yeah. Uh, but right now we are looking at uh, a different topic, which is, uh, and I'm not very sure whether it's a good idea. It's possibly sexist to say the bell of the PR ball. Why not the bow of the PR ball? <laughs> but I like that. I like uh, the way they put it. Whoever thought of that topic, nicely done. Content. <laughs> So I'm going to, uh, uh, you know, we obviously know what it means that uh, in, in the in the business of public relations, uh, as it is the business and craft of public relations, uh, social media, and ever since we've had uh, uh, the likes of blogs, which started somewhere in the early 2000s, to uh, uh, what we have now, a very hyperactive world of... Uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter and you know uh, and whatever else keeps coming up and may 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 come up in future, and uh, suddenly the entire business of uh, reaching out of outreach has changed from what it mean meant reaching out to a a dozen odd or you know five dozen odd journalists uh, now means that you need to reach out to a host of uh, as as they say influencers you know. And uh, uh, given that, I think the entire business has, has changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, ask Deepshika, you know, from a, coming as you are from a traditional PR agency and, of course, which is now doing a fair bit of, uh, you know, everything else in the integrated marketing communication business to, uh, to talk about how the business has changed and, uh, and, 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 and whether it is... Uh, as, as the topic suggests, the bell of the ball. Yeah, and like I said, I like that topic. Uh, thank you, Pradyuman. So, uh, yes, I think you've all heard of integrated marketing, and that's where all agencies are going towards. And when I say all agencies, whether it's advertising agencies, media buying agencies, PR agencies, digital agencies, event management, everybody is talking integrated marketing. I, I want the liberty to show you a little video. Um, 
and then we will talk about integrated marketing after we see this. I'm sure quite a few would have seen this already. Uh, so bear with me, those who haven't, um, maybe it'll be nice for them. So uh, this is a campaign which won the Grand Prix at the Cannes Lions this year, right? So it was done in 2014. So just take a look at this. Okay, so I'm going to just give you some actions to do and just do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. <laughs> Show me what it looks like to fight like a girl. <laughs> now throw like a girl. Aww. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. So do you think you just insulted your sister? No. I, yeah, insulted girls, but not my sister. <laughs> Is like a girl a good thing? Actually, I don't know what it really, if it's a bad thing or a good thing. It sounds like a bad thing. It sounds like you're trying to humiliate someone. So when they're in that vulnerable time, between 10 and 12, how do you think it affects them when somebody uses like a girl as an insult? I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time they're already trying to figure themselves out and when somebody says you hit like a girl, it's like, well, what does that mean? Because they think they're a strong person, it's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as them. And what advice do you have to young girls who are told to run like a girl, kick like a girl, hit like a girl, swim like a girl? Keep doing it because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring and you're still getting to the ball in time and you're still being first, you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean, yes, I kick like a girl and I swim like a girl and I walk like a girl and I wake up in the morning like a girl because I am a girl and that's not something that I should be ashamed of so I'm going to do it anyway. That's what they should do. If I asked you to, to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Would you like a chance to redo it? Yeah. Why can't run like a girl also mean win the race? Okay. So the reason I wanted to show you this is I want to ask you a question. Is this advertising? Is this PR? Is this social media? What is this? It's PR. Because it won the, Gra uh, the Grand Prix PR Lions. Is that why you're saying it's PR? Interesting, yes. They were so focusing on a social behavior. And if you look at the, the detailing on this campaign, and you can Google it, and there's lots of it out there, it's actually based on an insight. The insight, which is a consumer insight, and that's what most brand campaigns want to do, right? Understand a consumer insight. The insight is that somewhere along the line, like a girl had actually become an insult. And the whole objective of this campaign was change that perception, change that behavior. So behavior change is what the campaign wanted to do. And honestly, that's exactly why it was in the PR category and not any other category. So when we were talking in the morning, what does PR actually do? Change perception, change behavior, change a point of view 
or get people to understand what is happening in the larger environment. So this campaign was actually, uh, interestingly, it was conceptualized in a typical brainstorming that we all have, agencies, clients, and although a lot of you are going to become part of it when you go to get there. It doesn't matter where the idea came from. It was how it was put together and then actually strategy conceptualized of communicating it across different channels. And when I say different channels, advertising becomes a channel, PR, what we call this traditional media relations, becomes a very important channel. And let's not forget that while this won some almost 90 million views on YouTube, so you may say, okay, social PR was actually what got them those views and you know, there was lots of stuff on Twitter and Facebook and so on, and that's why we, they got these views. It was actually the debate led by traditional PR. So when you call the traditional PR who set up these interesting conversations on national, international television, put together panels on talking about like a girl and what does it actually mean, look, let's look at behavior change. Traditional media, I think journalists writing on the issues, they came into the space. So it was truly a integrated 360 degree campaign which went across all mediums, but driven by PR and the heart of it was a insight a consumer insight. So I just wanted to put that across that when we talk about integrated marketing today, it actually comes from the right insight. And in a IMC room or integrated marketing room, today brand managers or brand custodians, they don't really care where it comes from. For him, it's a full team. It can come from any of the agencies. And then we all build on that idea together and each take away our part of it and bring about the execution excellence that we were talking about. So that's where PR is actually today. It is definitely on the table with all the other agencies and we are thinking like this. And I can see that when I look at your curriculum, you are being taught like that. You are being taught brand communication, marketing communication, marketing strategy, business strategy, all of all that. So that when you come to that table, you have the background to be able to call out an insight and then be able to develop it into a program. So that's what I wanted to say about this one. There is another video which maybe we'll play a little later and it's specifically on Twitter. And when I knew she was on the panel, I said, I must show you this. It's a very interesting way in which Twitter has been used by a company, not in the normal everyday way that we do it. So maybe we'll look at it a little later. Harish, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we, we all know as, as, as uh, uh, you know, founder of uh, Social Wavelength, which is now part of JWT, uh, you obviously lead, <clears throat> you know, you, you, you've had several thousand campaigns and social media has become a very uh, integral part of uh, the way communications business is uh, but 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 do you see it having become you know as as critical uh, as uh, uh, you know any other any other business or you know and, and and what are the kind of changes that you've seen over the years in the in, the, in this in this field uh, so so before answering the question you know i've been sitting uh, for about a couple of hours now in the audience listening to the conversations. And the discussion all seems to be about PR versus digital versus mainline versus research. I think it is time for us to elevate the discussion one notch higher, you know, and understand what is the fundamental shift in the consumer behavior that has happened. And then how each of these stakeholders can actually create value for their client brands. And to me, the biggest shift that has happened is democratization of communication. You know, once upon a time, a few people, whether media houses or reporters, could control the entire communication. And whether you're an advertising guy or a marketing or a PR guy, your job was to manage that ecosystem. Because of internet, because of Facebook, because of Twitter, democratization has happened. And each of these stakeholders needs to reevaluate how are they going to understand the democratization and create value. The second thought I want to share is that, you know, when I talk to a mainline agency CEO, he says, we are starting a social media division. Next time I meet a PR agency MD, he says, social media chalu karne wale. I meet somebody from research, we are starting a social media practice. No doubt social media is very critical, but instead of trying to move into the social digital space 
at least the way I believe that each of these stakeholders are extremely important in the life of a brand, they need to understand digital as a medium and see how they can leverage that medium to deliver what they are originally supposed to do. The second thought I want to share is that the power of digital is not restricted to digital just as a medium. If we think of digital just as print, TV and digital, we are getting it completely wrong. It is the biggest change that has happened in our life since maybe the invention of the steam engine. You know, steam engine, Adam Smith model, industrial revolution created a certain kind of society and economy where we valued profitability and talent and hierarchical structures that is completely getting diminished. Companies who make no money are getting hugely valued simply because of their cash flow potential. The business models are changing from being very, very hierarchical to, to like a cobweb kind of a model, you know, hub and spoke. So I think as businesses, as people from the field of management, we need to understand the power of digital beyond just being like a tool for media. It is going to transform the way businesses happen and the way economies kind of dwell. Coming back specifically to your question, do we see social being extremely relevant and important to a customer? Absolutely for a brand. And to me, the best example of a social media site is not Facebook, it is not Twitter, it is actually a platform like TripAdvisor. If you are in the hotel business, and your customers are not writing good reviews about you, you might as well shut down shop. It doesn't matter what PR you do. It doesn't matter how big ads you put up. It doesn't matter what is the TVC you are running. If consumers don't speak good things about you, your business is dead. And that to me is the real power of digital, which each stakeholder has to be able to learn and manifest. How can I engage with my consumers to get them to say good things about me, which gets me new business? The original idea when Facebook started was not to earn likes. It was not about promoted post. It was the concept of fan. What is a fan? Somebody who loves me. So in a mass of 10 million people, can I find a thousand people who really love me as a brand? Can I engage with them? So day there is trouble, they will come and defend me. When Maggie was going through all their horror stories, you should be seeing the way people were pouring their heart outs on Facebook and Twitter for Maggie. Saying our entire hostel life, we have lived off Maggie. What will we do now? I mean, to me, that is the power of the medium. But, uh, you know, you, you, you mentioned about TripAdvisor, but we've seen in the past that a lot of user-generated content, user-generated uh, comments which are there on these uh, platforms like a TripAdvisor or True or uh, a Zomato, a lot of it is uh, uh, kind of doctored where, you know, the, the hotel or the restaurant or the, you know, resort might uh, actually influence it. So, so, so that's a good, good question. You know, the digital economy finally is democracy at work. You know, so if somebody goes and doctors a few comments, somebody somewhere will pick it up and figure out that these comments are doctored. So if you actually go to TripAdvisor, not only can you see a comment, you can see the reviewer of the commenter also saying how many times has he reviewed and what has he reviewed and how many times his comment has been valuable. So the good part about democracy is you can fool people for some time, but you can't fool them all the time. So democracy has its own ways of balancing out and ensuring that people aren't to fool I actually got caught at some point of time. Pratiman, can I just say something? Yeah, yeah. Just uh, day before yesterday, I was in Bangalore. And Radisson, what, the guy at the front desk, he, he knew I was happy with the service. He said, I said, I want to give you a personal recommendation. Give me your card so that I can send you a recommendation. I says, no, post on TripAdvisor. When I posted on TripAdvisor, the guy took two days to vet my review out. So I posted day before yesterday when I came back from Hyderabad, you know, and I think last evening the trip actually, uh, the trip advisor post got posted. So there are governance mechanisms in place to filter out shady comments. And you've got them 500 points on your jet airways. <laughs> I don't care. I fly Indigo, who doesn't care either. Right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, on uh, on 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 uh, on another note, Bhairavi, you've uh, been a uh, active journalist and now are looking at uh, uh, communications for Twitter. Uh, but you know, this entire business of uh, microblogging and it has gained considerably over the years, and uh, increasingly, uh, you know, the influencers, as they are called, are uh, reaching out to the publics via Twitter. And, uh, you know, 
obviously, uh, uh, in organizations like yours, you'll have uh, fewer people doing a lot of work and a lot of insights. But what are the insights in terms of the way uh, a, a platform like Twitter is being used for uh, outreach? I think when we started out with you know using Twitter, we it exploded. You know there was a lot of talk, a lot of people who became influencers with time. But now it's sort of plateaued because um, the credibility of the influencers is in question at the moment. They are uh, being bought for the tweets that they post, so nobody really knows when they're actually blogging, micro-blogging about something they've actually experienced, or is it somebody paying them for that tweet? So now that the influencer's landscape is changing on Twitter, uh, I think brands need to really work on producing their own content much more effectively in order to be a great account on Twitter, like a great user. Um, I mean, it's multi-layered because uh, the thing is that there, there needs to be consistency on how brands use social media. It needs to be done on several levels, like, you know, one is housekeeping, where people are asking them something that they need to respond about. Secondly, when there is an event, they need to tweet, you know, correct information, give live updates from wherever they are. And um, thirdly, it's also managing grievances that may come, you know, at them at some point on Twitter or Facebook. Um, where I see the gap is that um, brands are trying to jump into conversations where they think they belong, but they don't, you know. So it's sort of like a fear of missing out, you know. They want to be in your face, but they're not finding the right conversation to start. And they're not able to self-start conversations at this point. I think that is where the problem lies at the moment. But, but do you find brands using it effectively? Uh, some do, not all. For example, I'll give you um, I mean, something that I experienced personally. Um, I just tweeted something you know, funny to Vodafone saying, you know, I'm, if I'm going to hold for 10 minutes, I want to hear better music at least. You know? And um, the, the, the person handling the account uh, tweeted back saying, please DM me your query and I will get back to you. So, you know, it's literally very robotic that they are just trying to answer my question without really understanding that I'm actually joking about this. So you need, if, if you're going to be there, and it's great that they can respond in time, but then it needs to be the correct response. Otherwise, it's not effective. Actually, before I move to uh, the next, you know, and, and, and ask Deepshika to comment, is as, as, as an organization, are you really uh, doing your bit to evangelize uh, effective use of the platform? Yeah, so we, I mean, we do have um, strategic and innovative tie-ups with brands where we try to make use of the platform in order to create an innovative service for the brand. For instance, um, for Jet Airways, we've created something which is a hashtag Jet Instant which will give you, you know, updates on your flight or your, you know, on your check-in or, you know, anything else that you may require while flying. So those are the kind of innovations that we have started providing on the platform. Yeah, it's, uh, I'll take up from what you were talking about where brands have to create platforms where they can engage with their customers, not just consumers, but even larger stakeholder universes. Uh, you will allow me to show me that second video. I think this is the right time to show it because we're discussing what are these kind of platforms that you can create on something like Twitter. Can you show that uh, second video? So this is by Indigo. Uh, you all know Indigo as a brand. Picture this. The year was 2006 and a new kid on the block entered India's aviation industry. Indigo, a low-cost, no-frills airline that broke the stereotypical perception that low-cost equals ordinary. It was chic, it was prompt, it was responsive and hustle-free and always on time. Seven years later, the brand has consistently maintained the highest market share in the low-cost carrier category with close to 70 million passengers flown to date. In August 2013, Indigo decided to take the lead into social media with the launch of the 24-7 customer service channel on Twitter at Indigo 60. So here's how it all began. We put together a team of Twitter frontliners who worked on a 24-7 data. Stakeholders from the internal and external organizations were identified, and roles and responsibilities were clearly defined, especially in terms of prices. 
fellow consumers in the helped us set the house in order and he launched into the channel with a big bang. An unprecedented 200 followers joined us on day one of the launch, but close on the heels of this success in the first crisis. An influential Twitter personality with more than 200,000 followers, Miss Mani tweeted about missing her flight despite a wet check-in and this led to a negative chatter about the brand among her followers. The Twitter for the team instantly acknowledged her tweet and alerted the airport staff in Mumbai to accommodate her to the next flight. Going a step further, a meet and assist service was proactively arranged for the passenger to personally assist her through the arrival, which resulted in a positive endorsement in the end within two hours of the original tweet. Another example of the seamless integration between the digital and the PR team was during the Bangalore mishap. An interval flight from Delhi to Bangalore slid off the runway while landing to the hilly lanes and broke a few runway lights, leading to a burst of chatter among the aviation media on Twitter. The internal team was immediately activated to monitor the online space and aligned with the PR team to issue a reporting statement on Twitter and address media queries within three hours of the uploads. The airline was appreciated for its proactive response and all this helped us dilute the impact of the crisis. The brand is greatly inclined towards engaging and involving the community further in a two-way communication. Weekly contests are run to keep the audiences engaged and this approach has gained so much traction that 65 Equals was featured as the most engaging hashtag for January 2013 by Unmetric. Ten months down the line, the first ever 24-7 customer service with a channel for an airline in the country at Indigo 60 is growing from strength to strength, with more than 75% of its players being addressed within 15 minutes and 96% within one hour. Indigo is also featured as the third fastest airline with respect to response time on Twitter in the world by the Daily Mail UK, based on the skip to port. Indigo was also featured as one of the top notch Indian York. brands to have excellent Deep customer York service on Twitter York and your client? But this is not a brand or a team that rests on its lawyers. Will Street Debate enter into the social media space? Yeah, I think uh, we can hold it there. Now there's a lot of so you're a on that. You're a client plugger. No, so, uh, like I clarified, the first one was not my client. It's actually his client, <laughs> PNG. Um, can I also so play my client video, please? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay, I'll get get next one. We do yours. Now the reason I wanted to show to show you that is how can you use a channel like Twitter to engage with your consumer? And this is something. It's customer service, right? And you talked about Jet. Uh, so they went to a, up to a particular point of providing information on your flight delays, flight status. Whereas this is real time, I have an issue now, what are you going to be able to do for it? And you can test it out. I've tested it out myself. It does work. And I think this is the power of social and digital, which we PR professionals need to be able to harness and advise our clients with. You saw quite a few examples in that also of how to manage crisis, the PR crisis, right? That also is part of our everyday PR life. But if I have a great property like this which exists with social, I can actually make it work for my benefit. And like Hari said, the, it's not, there is no battle between us. It's about what is required for the brand, what will work best at what particular time and which medium to use to do that. So that's why I thought it's, uh, it should be interesting to see some of these perspectives also. But how equipped are agencies like yourself to uh, look at, uh, uh, you know, handling the, uh, the social part of the business? Yeah. Uh, okay. So... No, because, because there are the yeah. fact that you know, you have agencies like Social Wavelength absolutely. existing and part of the same group that you are, That's that right. you are part of. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, you know, obviously means that PR agencies were, were late to uh, get onto the, uh, you know, realize your potential and as was discussed in the earlier panel yeah. too. So I have to say, uh, I of course represent an agency which woke up to this almost five years back, uh, to Social. And we have been experimenting the first two years. Some started, didn't start. And like Harish said, you know, kabhi hua, kabhi nahi hua, kuch hua, nahi hua. And when we realized the real problem was we were trying to train 
traditional PR people to be able to do social. Not going to happen. It is when we decided we will get people who are socially inclined from social digital agencies possibly, and we do have one of his ex-colleagues now who heads up our uh, social digital cell, that's when the penny dropped, that the only way it will work is if we create specialized teams within the larger PR framework who understand social and the power of social. So to answer your question, we have a special dedicated so you, team. So you do, they, they do work in silos? They do not work in silos, and we'll come to that. So they have a special dedicated team which works on social. There is also something called the newsroom. So we are one of those who started our own newsroom. Some clients have newsrooms, but we have a live newsroom of our own, which actually monitors and listens to conversations on social media all the time. Because we've been talking in the morning, everything is about conversation. What is 